Are you in or are you out? Out of bounds plays are coming up on Rule Review. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Officials Institute, where we combine rules talk with video instruction for every official. Are you a subscriber yet? If not, what's stopping you? Click that subscribe button now, and while you're at it, hit the like button as well. Oh, and don't forget to share this link with someone you know, because with your help, we can get the word out to even more officials and all get better together. The out-of-bounds violation is a simple and straightforward rule, right? When the ball is on or outside the boundary line, we blow our whistle and stop play. But sometimes it's not that easy. How did the ball get out of bounds? Who caused it to go out? What if a player is airborne and touches the ball? Does it matter where they left the floor prior to jumping? These are all questions that can sometimes make a simple rule not so simple. Let's go ahead and watch some video to help clear up some of these questions on Out of Bounds. Roll those clips. In our first clip, the home team makes an errant pass causing the ball to hit the official and bounce back onto the court for a fast break going the other way. Let's zoom in and talk about what happened. When the ball gets passed, it heads straight toward the official on the sideline. Instead of going out of bounds into the stands, it hits the official and bounces back onto the floor. So why didn't anyone blow their whistle to kill the play? Isn't this an unfair advantage? Well, the rule states the ball is out of bounds when it touches or is touched by any other person on or outside a boundary. So since the official was standing on the floor and not on the boundary line, the ball, when it touches him, is considered to be in bounds at the spot the official is standing, and therefore should not be blown dead. It is important that we, as officials, are aware of where we are standing at all times, because even though we may never intend to be in the way of a live ball, if it does happen, we know whether or not to sound our whistle for an out-of-bounds violation. Let's watch that one again. In this clip, the ball is shot from the three-point line and bounces off the ring and high into the air, but before it could be rebounded, the officials whistle the play dead. Let's take a closer look and find out why. After the missed shot, the ball bounces up and onto the top of the backboard. But this is not a violation, because Rule 4.4.5 tells us a ball which touches the front faces or edges of the backboard is treated the same as touching the floor in bounds. However, if we continue to follow the path of the ball after it bounces, it passes over the top and since the backboard is a rectangular shape, this action causes the ball to become out of bounds. Go ahead and watch it again. Our next clip shows a pass that is deflected and stolen by a defender, but the officials stop play for an out-of-bounds violation. But was this a correct application of the rule? Looking at this a second time, we see that after the defender is the last to touch the ball, bouncing it to the floor, he steps out of bounds. And when he returns, he is the first to touch the ball again. Easy one, right? Except there is one problem. Last to touch, first to touch is not an actual rule. 
There is no restriction on a player that has gone out of bounds involuntarily, prohibiting them from touching the ball after re-establishing inbound status. The player was legally in bounds when the deflection occurred, and his momentum carried him out of bounds. Because he did not leave the playing court voluntarily, he is allowed to come back onto the court and regain control. It is also important to note, the location of a player is determined by where they are touching the floor, which means only one foot, not two, is needed to establish inbound status. This play was a legal play. Watch it again. The last clip involves a pass that fails to be caught going right through the hands of the offensive player and out of bounds into the wall behind him. After the official signals the direction the ball will be going for the throw-in, his partner approaches and provides additional information in an effort to get the call right. However, after the brief conversation, the original call stands and the ball is given to the blue team for a throw-in on the side. Let's take a closer look at what happened. As we watch this play again, we see a pass that was apparently deflected several times. By charting the path of the passed ball, we see its initial trajectory change directions, indicating the ball was tipped. And when it reaches its intended recipient, it changes yet again due to a second tip. Since the ball is caused to go out of bounds by the last player in bounds to touch it, in this play, the ball was out on blue. Let's talk about what happened after the signal was made. After the official blows his whistle and makes his ruling by pointing in the direction the ball will be going for the throw-in, the coach apparently makes a plea for a different ruling. In most cases, when an official makes a ruling on a foul or a violation, there is no reason to overrule or publicly question that ruling. However, in a situation as this, an out-of-bounds call that may have been ruled incorrectly is an acceptable procedure. As officials, we should never simply overrule our partner's call. The proper procedure to follow is just as what happened here. Go to your partner, tell them the information you have, and let them decide whether they will change the call or not. After hearing their partner's input, the official who originally ruled on the play and only that official will blow their whistle one more time and give a final signal in the direction that they have decided to rule. Just remember, the ruling official has the final say, regardless of who may be right, and regardless of what is decided, all officials must respect that decision and move on to continue with the game as a team. Here it is one last time. There you have it. That is our explanation of the out-of-bounds rule in a nutshell. Hopefully this helps to simplify some of those not-so-common out-of-bounds situations you may see in your next game, and better prepare you for that next not-so-simple out-of-bounds play. Now remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel before you go, and share, share, share this video so we can reach as many officials as possible. The more officials we can reach, the better the game will get. Until we see you again, have a good game.